Hello my soccer universe for the first proper World Cup preview in a way because now we know all 32 nations that are at the World Cup. We had Wales confirmed last week and now we know already that it is Australia and Costa Rica that round out the 32 teams. It also means I have to get only three jerseys to complete all 32 teams which is host Qatar, probably waiting for a new jersey there, not sure. Saudi Arabia, um, similar story, and Costa Rica um, as well. All three of them are not as straightforward as I was hoping for them to be, but you know, still have time. World Cup starts uh, mid-November, a little bit later than mid-November as well. So uh, in that sense, all fine on my part. Okay, uh, big disclaimer. I of the three matches that we will be talk, 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 talking about and I will do that first of course and then uh, we get at a later point I will uh, be looking into um, the uh, favorites uh, and you know first projection for the entire tournament but uh, the disclaimer that I have to do is that I have not seen any of these matches live I, I really would have loved to see both of them However, I didn't have the opportunity, so I just saw some uh, shady video highlights. I read a little bit up on that. I know the controversies around them, so that's that. I'm wearing Australia. Um, usually, I'm very much for Australia. I just felt um, with them playing against Peru, I was always going to be in a losing position because I really like both of these teams and what's even worse is, you know, I then decided to go for Peru because, you know, I have family connections to Peru. Well, Australia has always been one of my favorite countries and it was definitely the trip of a lifetime when I visited there in 98. Uh, and I always had a strong feelings pro-Australia on almost every stage. Uh, this time around it was not, and of course then they make it, uh, it means Positives means I need to get an Australia shirt for sure. I actually would like to get an away jersey there too. So yeah, I would say let's dive into it. And we have to of course start with the um, Asian playoff between the two third place teams between the United Arab Emirates and, and Australia. And honestly, I think one a totally underreported story there, it, there is is the location. Uh, yes, it does make sense to have these playoffs in Qatar. They are the host nation, you want to have a new, new, new neutral location, it makes a whole lot of sense in that way. However, didn't we just move a World Cup into the winter because it's too hot to be played there? I know this was one of those air-conditioned stadiums, still it was freaking hot in there. Uh, it is maybe from that point of view, I'm not so unhappy that I didn't see these games because they were awful from what I hear in most of the time. Uh, and so the first half of uh, the UAE against Australia is something to forget about. It was an urban that gave, gave, gave Australia the lead right when the Emirates actually were a little bit better. Then uh, Canedo does equalize shortly thereafter. So all things, things, things are level. And then Hrustic with a deflected shot gives Australia the 84th the win to go into the playoff final. For me, location aside, the other big story uh, of uh, that game was how Peru did not show up. Everyone is talking about the penalty shoot shootout and how the goalkeeper made uh, and his antics pulled off the Australians and whether this was fair or unfair. Uh, I honestly don't care. This is all fair game to me. However, that Peru did not show up in this game. I think they had their first shot and goal in overtime. That to me is the is the big stunner in there because Peru on um, any I think if those two teams play at this very moment 10 times Peru will win win 9 out of 10. I think Peru is a way better and a much more attractive side than this Australia team is. I give Australia the fight. But purely tell us this is a Peru side that should beat Australia every single day. It did not happen. It was because I guess the occasion got to them. Yes, there were many Peruvian fans uh, there to give uh, support, but it didn't really help. And Australia, actually, even in regulation, was overall the better team. I always had the, uh, the feeling, um, but it was inevitable. I mean, I, I watched Austria, Denmark, or Denmark, Austria. Um, and kind of followed this a little bit on the uh, screen. And uh, as soon as I knew this is going to overtime, I mean, even had paid for this seems to be going to penalties. 
uh, which is something I was not really hap ha happy about. And again, in the penalty shoot, I mean, the big one is that the red main, uh, the goalkeeper, uh, the reserve goalkeeper came on who plays in Australia uh, purely for the penalty shoot. And he, of course, uh, a little bit like Yerji Dudek in the 2005 Champions League final. Back then I found it unfair, but even then I realized he's allowed to do that. So, um, it's fair game, you have to compile Popozov. And uh, it actually seemed to be all going Peru's way because the first penalty was already saved. Um, however, Advincula um, puts the third one onto the, um, uh, the upright and then it was all level. So, uh, Peru uh, gave away their advantage there. Uh, then uh, Mabel in the sixth series uh, makes it, uh, gives Australia the lead. And then Valera um, is saved by, uh, by Red Wing. Now, uh, Red Main. Red Main. Uh, I am actually not sure. I mean, it's of course everything that everyone is talking about is uh, the goalie going like that and jumping around. I'm not sure how much this is actually affecting the players. I heard uh, different, uh, differing opinions on that one. The fact is he saved that one penalty. And is now the big, uh, the big uh, winner there. Also, also a nice story behind him because a few year, years ago he thought he's done with the professional game. Now he got his country to the World Cup. So good on him. Uh, again, I think the referee was Lavko Vincic, who uh, since the uh, Europa League final, I have not a high opinion of because he swallowed his, his whistle. And this time he just couldn't stop admonishing the keeper for saying, I'm giving you a yellow card, I'll give you a, 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 a yellow card and the keeper reminding me. I'm only on the line, I'm not stepping off the line. This is for me a much more... Uh, this referee shouldn't be refereeing, let's put it that way. <laughs> At least not those speak games. So, I mean, there are many uh, shouldn't have. The long and short of it, Australia, as I said, a country that I largely uh, do support and I'm generally by qualify against a team where I have family relations with. Uh, I've said that Peru is not out there because the Peruvian fans are always fun. Um, however, we get the Australian fans and they, of course, go now in a group that will sound very familiar to them uh, with France and Denmark, two teams that they are either team would have because they made up the, the other gr group C at the 2018 World Cup and only Tunisia will look newish in there. Then the other game also had quite some controversy uh, between Costa Rica and New Zealand. I mean, Costa Rica too, taking a very, very early lead in the third minute through a deflected Campo shot. And then they were just hanging on. New Zealand actually having more chances, more shots on goal, having a goal disallowed where, yeah, maybe there was a, pen, uh, there, there was a foul in the build-up, I thought it was rather soft there. I think a penalty shot was also there, a little bit in there, but, uh, you know, referee didn't uh, didn't give it. Um, then a red card was even given to New Zealand. Um, also, probably all right. And still, New Zealand were the better team. Costa Rica... I think Australia deserved it over Peru. Especially after watching the highlights, um, and for, for me again, there was too little talk. I think Australia actually deserved going to, to the World Cup in that one game, despite Peru being the more talented team and so on. Costa Rica did not. New Zealand were the better team on the day, and so it's a little bit sad to see that um, New, New Zealand didn't at least get to overtime and get a chance to call to qualify. As well, however, the Ticos, you know, as they are, they are, they are a World Cup mainstay uh, in a way. So, you know, uh, will also be fun. I'm not sure if I look Georgia, uh, Georgia as well as Costa Rica is a red jersey. There are many red jerseys back there. New Zealand would be white, also many white. Probably would have come for a black New Zealand jersey. Yeah, I might still get a New Zealand jersey, although they are really hard to come by around here. So yeah, this is now, and Costa Rica, of course, goes in a group with Spain, Germany, Japan. Good luck there. I actually think Japan is overlooked in that group. So having the groups now finalized, it's, I think, a really, really good time to look into uh, the first projection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run group by group um, and show you what my model, uh, based on the ratings, which is the ELO ratings, the FIFA ratings, also the uh, book uh, bookmakers odds, kind of av average of a large number of bookmakers, what they are saying. Uh, and AKJ bookmakers odds had had a huge impact there as well. 
Uh, you see, see already in Group A, I gave Qatar a decent home field field advantage. However, their bookmakers odds are so bad that it actually drops them below San Senegal in, in the rating where if I would only use FIFA and the ELO ra rating, they would be just a smidgen above Senegal. However, so um, in that sense, Netherlands and Senegal, which is actually the, or the uh, unofficial opening of the first game in there, uh, are the two teams that are now expected to add, add, advance with Qatar and Ecuador out there. I think it's a very even group. I already said it before. The Dutch should be seen as favorites, but the other three teams are rather, rather, rather close. Group B, similar story. England, despite recent failings, but again, don't pay, put too much uh, emphasis on Nations League. Should be considered favorites over the other three. I think that Iran is largely overlooked. Again, the bookmakers kind of pull Iran a little bit down here. Um, it's USA, Wales, and Iran in that order, according to my model. Group C, a little bit more clear. I would say Argentina, Mexico ahead of the other two. Again, Saudi Arabia. I have not yet. I have uh, decided at the moment to not yet give the. Um, I would, I would say Arabian teams, or is, uh, you know, that Aliar should be given a little bit of a home home advantage. For me, then the question was, do I give it to Tunisia and Morocco? In, in a way, I probably would have given. So, I mean, you know, half a home field field advantage. However, given the tension we saw, the Arabian Qatar, I'm not sure um, how much there will be, although there will be probably many Saudi Arabian fans coming to Qatar. So I think one could give them a little bit more advantage, which could lift them level. I think Argentina has the major favorite in that group, Mexico probably a little bit above Poland. Poland, again, at World Cups is usually disappointing. A deceivingly difficult group, and if the Nations League proved one thing, is that Denmark is a serious opponent to France. Tunisia, I would definitely put below the two. However, uh, Tunisia is a very well-coached team, and, and, and Australia always can give it a fight. But it should be the two, Euro the, the two Europeans coming out of that group. Same thing goes for Group E, to be honest. Spain and Germany are above. I think Japan is overlooked. Costa Rica also very often. Last time Costa Rica was in a really tough group, they won that group. So you never know, but I would say that Spain and Germany are two teams on the up um, that actually, if everything falls right for them, could make a deep run in the, in, in, in the World Cup. Which is something that in Group F is, uh, yes, Belgium and Korea, again, the, Euro, the European teams, and you see a lot of European teams even in, in, in Berkeley, again, the European teams are favored here. However, um, this is an aging Croatia team. This is a Belgium team where I have very serious doubts about their defense. I think Belgium is largely overrated in both the FIFA and the ELO ratings. So uh, not so sold on Belgium uh, there. But we got to see. Brazil... Not only the favorite in their group, they're also the tournament favorite. And again, it's between the two European teams, Switzerland and Serbia. I don't think a Cameroon, although having a big name, Cam Cameroon will not play a role in their group too, to be honest. Switzerland and Serbia renew their ri rival. That's always an ugly game in many ways because there are so many, you know, given the Albanian-based players, in, uh, you know, uh, the players of Albanian descent in the Swiss squad, Together with, uh, you know, Serbian and Albania not being the best friends, this is going to be a touchy affair in many ways. So yeah, Switzerland might just edge that one, although don't underestimate the Serbians. They qualify that group over Portugal, although under controversial circumstances. And then Group H, um, again, everyone would say Portugal and Uruguay. Don't overlook the South Koreans. I think they can do something. I think the South Korea squad is a largely overlooked look, look squad. Um, I don't have high hopes for Ghana too. Because I think this will be a role work of where African teams outside of Senegal and probably Morocco will struggle. Uh, to be honest, again, Portugal and Euro, uh, and in Uruguay, just on the strength of their rating, are the favorites in this group and in that order. Which would set up the following uh, bracket. Anyway, it's always nice to see that they also to evaluate the draw. Uh, and to see if, what are good spots. I mean, we would have a round of 16 match of Netherlands, United States, um, uh, playing then against Argentina, Denmark. So Argentina, the favorites, definitely in that part there, although it will not be an easy ride for Argentina going forward. Um, because Denmark and the Netherlands are two really good European sides that both of which I could see make a deep run. Actually, the Netherlands a little bit more because they, I think they have, have a pretty good young core as well. There is a little 2004 for, 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 for team 
uh, around them. Then the other, the, the next one, uh, hugely interesting. We have Spain, Croatia, uh, and then Brazil, Uruguay. So, uh, Spain, Croatia, you remember the Euros, that would be interesting. Brazil, Uruguay is a local rivalry, never easy. And then Spain against Brazil of all the matchups we have in, in the quarterfinal. That would be the marquee ma match, matchup. And I already see that the upper half is a little bit more loaded with the best two teams in there who would meet in the semifinal between Brazil and Art or Argentina. What a mouth-watering tie that would prove to be. The lower bracket falls a little bit off. I mean, we get really good quarterfinals there. Not so much in, in the lower bracket. England, Senegal, Senegal uh, and even I would still think that England should go over Senegal, but uh, it's not a given in, by any uh, means. France should beat Mexico, uh, which would set up a France against England quarterfinal. Sounds tasty. Uh, high, high it's not Brazil against Spain um, or even Ar Argentina, Ned, Netherlands. I would argue, although there we could maybe argue a little, little bit more, given that England have been doing very well in recent tournaments, and France actually have won two, 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 two tournaments uh, as of late. So France would go over there. Belgium, Germany, Portugal, Switzerland. Um, I know the model puts Belgium over Germany. I would not bet against the Germans there. I think it would be Germany come, 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 come out of that bracket. Uh, if it was in reality at the most Belgium and then we have France, Belgium, also not a bad one. I, I think if this is France, Germany, we are talking a completely different scenario. So, uh, at the moment we predict, uh, Brazil against France final rematch of 98 with Brazil being heavy favorites. Um, I think especially the bookmakers odds. It's so much uh, skewed into Brazil's favor at the moment, which it seems to be at every World Cup. Ever since I'm doing the predictions, Brazil are the favorites, which kind of almost bugs me a little because Brazil always fell short. And I would actually say, well, Brazil this time seems to be. I have not seen Brazil play for a long time. And uh, yes, South American quad qualifiers are tough. Brazil seems to be very, very stable and well coached and have a, uh, a really, really good team with almost no weaknesses in many ways, but I could make a similar argument about the French squad, although, you know, winner's curse, Spain, Argentina also seems to be very stable, have beaten Brazil in the Copa America last year, so we gotta see. These are just the first predictions. We see now the overall favorites, which is something that I've used for the background, as I said, uh, Brazil heavily don't really am so sure about that in France, Argentina, Belgium round up the top four. Um, I think the next level, it would I would say until Denmark, these are teams that could uh, spring a surprise. Although, would you call it a surprise if Spain and Germany make a semi-final? Probably not. So yeah, that's it for me for the first World Cup proper pr uh, projection. Uh, please let me know what you think, how... How will the tournament go? Uh, what did you think about the qualifiers? Could you watch them? Um, uh, what do you think about all the points that are raised there? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.